Mark from I Am Organic Gardening and welcome to part three of how and why plants build the best soil. Now it's harvest time for our popcorn plants but in today's video I want to go over how much minerals did it really take out of the ground or nutrients take out of the ground because this is going to help us in the future to understand how much we have to put back into the soil so we have very healthy plants next year and what we have to do about it. And that also includes the roots in the bottom and the ground too. That's all organic matter. And also too, just as a tip, you never want to pull out a whole plant. You want to cut the plant at its base and leave the roots in the ground. So it, that's a natural tilling of the soil. And that will help your plants grow better next year and keep the soil food web alive. I just want to give you a general idea of how much is really taken from the soil. And this way it gives you a guideline in the future that you, um, of how much minerals you have to put back in the ground. Because it is extracting some, but you'll be surprised when I show you that it's not really a lot. After the growing season is over, we think we have to remineralize our soil a lot. Now we're talking real soil, uh, sand, silt, and clay, not compost or uh, nothing in our containers. Those are two different things. Container gardening and compost gardening is two different things. This is using real soil. So out of that sand, silt, and clay, what percentages was taking away that will not uh, go back into the soil to remove all the plants and all the produce from that ground? So I want to show you this illustration of what's really inside our plant so we have a better understanding before we have to remineralize our soil. All these numbers are, you can see the first line saying, this is after the water is removed. So 97% of what's left in the plant after the water removed is broken down into these four parts. The major one, carbon, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. 47% of that plant is carbon that's going to go back up in the atmosphere eventually. Next part is oxygen that's in the plant. 43% is going to be removed from that plant eventually over time and go back up in the atmosphere. Hydrogen 4% and nitrogen 3%. So that only leaves us 3% that is left that we're actually extracting from the soil. 3% of its total weight. Not the weight that is there when it's uh, filled with water, but after it's completely dehydrated, only 3% of what's left inside all that residue that didn't go back up in the atmosphere is what is, was extracted from the soil. Here I have a little demonstration. Our corn plant here that took sunlight and made root exudates is going to feed our soil food web. Then 85 to 95 percent of that is going to be fed to the plant. Now after the plant has been growing all the time and what's left over is over here is 97 percent of that plant is made up to, into four components that is going to go back up in the atmosphere. So the actually the nutrients or the minerals that are taking out of the ground is only left by three percent. But if we return that corn plant and make it into compost and cover the soil again, you're returning a good portion, more than half of that 3% back. If you remove the corn plant and the produce off it, you're losing that whole 3%. And again, too, if you're removing just, say, the corn cobs itself or any type of produce like tomatoes or squash or zucchini, you're only removing half of it back, again, from the soil. So what does this all mean that I explained? The best thing to do to show that I'm correct about this, go out and get a soil test. It's going to cost you anywhere from, it ranges from $15 up to $50 depending on what you do. But the main thing about your soil test, don't worry about the results so much, is what I'm trying to say to you. Any soil test that you have done in your soil, no matter what type you think it is, there is not a lack of a certain thing like boron or sulfur or copper. All the nutrients, the micronutrients and the macronutrients, they're there. That soil test will show you that they're in the ground. Now it's your job to create the soil biology. Soil biology is created by leaving roots in the ground, this part of the plant, so it can feed the soil through that liquid carbon and the exudates to feed that soil biology. You need water and you need sun. Now that will increase over time. The more you 
leave the soil alone, it will increase the biology. So you, again, you never want to pull a plant out of the ground like I just did. You want to always leave the roots in the ground and that biology will grow over time and all those micro and macronutrients will come to you available for free. You do not have to add certain types of rock dust or any other thing to your soil. The